This is IBM Museum. I'm doing recording a little bit different time of day than I normally do, mainly to show the just a documentation process I do for adapters. I go through there, uh, let's say I get in a, a, an adapter new in the box, it has diskettes, it has a manual. Um, it's an adapter that I have not taken high resolution photographs of before that they don't exist online. So this is a, the formal video of me stepping through and each of these three steps I do are, um, they're not depending upon any particular order. I will just go through and, and actually work effectively left to right um, in my little recording area for, for the three steps I do. This is going to be the first step that I, of what I got in the background behind me is the taking the, the pictures of the adapter. And so I'm going to go through all, um, I have my photo rig there to the left behind me. You can, you can, um, you can also see a little bit bigger view on my camcorder that I have set up. Let's go through and, um, hide me on the webcam and I'll get turned around here, try and get set up, get my microphone, um, cable to go over to this area and I can see on my monitor the steps I'm going through that I'm normally doing this and this is the reason for the earlier recording time is that I try and do the photos of this of the adapters during the daylight hours I have a little bit more natural light within this area um, the sun coming through the windows and so it, it gives me a little bit better because just a little bit better photos all the photos that's really dependent very dependent upon um, light as well now there are there is like uh, Dave at EEV blog um, and uh, Big Clive They've gone through for their photo rigs and they, they go through actually very high resolution of little tiny items in the case of like Big Clive. But um, they, they've they gone through and they've uh, it kind of enhanced their setup with the big opaque um, like Tupperware dishes and things like that. The, um, the where it's they can put lights that go through and are diffused by those by those plastic containers to give a little bit better um, cover over the item that they're um, photographing. And, um, and that just results in a better picture. I could go through part of that um, just for the aspect of, but since the adapters and motherboard, even the full-size planners that I take pictures of, they can vary so much in size that I might have to come up with uh, a group of containers that I do, just depending on the varying sizes. Um, I do have the ring light, but as you know, it's discovered a lot of time when you have direct light, you get a reflection from from the circuit board side, and um, you know that can can kind of go through and introduce complications as it is. I'm going to go through, I'll get my phone placed over here for the eventual use of that. But so this area, starting from the basics, I go through, I have my bubble level. I've gone through and I've leveled out the, um, the surface that I'm photographing. And there's just a little bit of slope to the, the, the shop floor underneath. But I've, I've got a, actually a hydraulic jack in the back of this just to, to prop up a little bit of the back of my photography area. And what I'll, I plan to eventually do, the, the corners were bolted down in this table. And I'll actually go through some spring-loaded screws eventually to go through where I can fine-tune that 
and uh, probably go through and 3D print some just some square pieces in the corners that are that are threaded and can go through and work with this bench top. Um, I do have my mat kind of displays. I mean, you go through from the, of course, the metal surface um, to make sure that the bed is level. And I'm normally going through for this foam, this white foam backdrop. It makes it real easy for me to to take pictures of the um, the adapters because I I can I can get the subject adapter centered um, on this easy just by making the minute um, adjustments um, side to side. And of course, I'm going for the whatever field of view I need from the camera. I have the the boom of the camera. I've got the the just um, these are conventional clamps. It can be found out there for um, for mounting this sort of detail and my ring light and the Olympus TG6 camera that I use. And I can probably go through, I mean, they're easily enough to find as well. Uh, I can, I can uh, provide a link to some of those um, that are, that are being sold out there. I'm not really, um, I don't know of what the current sale value, and these are actually sold as more of a, um, uh, a an active camera or sport camera um, that just have the ability to go through and do macro photos as well, mainly in the regards of the examples you see of, of insects and things like that that are out there. Um, and, um, you know, even though I can use this camera for other things, this is my primary way that I take photographs of the of the adapters and things like that. So we'll get um, an example adapter here and I'll go through and document this a little bit more in a later video. This is a, a game port adapter for micro channel and actually relatively simplistic on the micro channel side. Um, but that's going to be our example. It's a it's a smaller adapter. I normally have to move the boom up a, a little bit higher, of course, for the for the larger adapters or even the the big planers can be um, quite a challenge to go through and even get a, a good background side to side and to uh, to get that camera up high enough on the boom. Even removing some of the the things at the at the top of the boom that I have. Um, just the um, the way I've got the the cables run and everything else for the kind of the hanger booms um, off to the side, and so going through and and placing the adapter, and a lot of time I go through and I have the camera just charging. I've got the 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 door compartment open um, to connect up the uh, charging cable. And I go through a lot of time and I typically will unplug this as the first step because the, the camera can't be connected up to um, that USB cable side, that charging cable side um, when it's in use. And so the camera will, will notify me sometimes that, hey, um, you know, the door is open and stuff like that, but that message quickly goes away. And so once I power it on, I'm going through underneath my, my bubble level, of course, of seeing kind of the placement of the adapter that I'm uh, taking the photograph of and moving this, this boom to the position that I, that I, that I need to, um, to make sure it's in the right place. I do go through and a lot of time I'll go through and I'll ba do some basic leveling of my, um, of my light ring as well, uh, just, to, just to have it kind of the same as the, the camera, uh, but it's not really the critical thing. And even in some instances, the, um, just the um, 
having the light ring a little bit offset for that, um, how it diffuses that light out of there um, can, be, can be helpful as well. But we go through, we get it basically leveled and then go through and work on the camera side, get it leveled. And so we get all set up for what should be a, a pretty good shot. On the camera, I'll go through and I actually turn on the, um, the Wi-Fi. Just go through the menu and by pressing that button, it has connect to a smartphone and I go through and OK. So I have on my phone where I can go through and I can change the wireless that I'm connected to, to that of the camera. And this is just a direct connection to the camera, of course. As it says, no internet unmetered. A lot of time you have to set up your device to um, Android and Chrome OS to stay connected to the device even though it doesn't have any internet over that connection and then i go through and i start up my olympus app and it's got the ability to to go through and to do the various things you can even see on my phone and the phone is actually pristine screen it's just the um i need to go through and clean the uh, carry case i always carry these things in the hard case just to save my phone and have it in that nice condition underneath. Um, but let's go through for the remote control aspect. We can see the adapter there on the, on the, our photography bed. Normally I go through and um, I can go in the kind of a landscape mode of my phone just to give a little bit better view. And it, it defaults to a, a autofocus. I go through and select some of the um, modes just to get it right. And you can see it's a little bit out of focus um, um, just in that mode that I'm in until I go through and can give it something to focus on and get it to set in. So I have my little, I'll put that in the little um, carrier off to the side. And we can see from that, I've got to do some basic alignment. Um, a lot of time I'll go through and I'll just shift around. The easy way is I'll go through and I'll shift around this pad. And that's just an easy way to, to, um, to, perform the minute adjustments. I'm just doing some centering um, just to get a basic view of the uh, adapter, enough gaps on the side. And of course I go through and edit these photos. A lot of time I will um, go through and even put a copyright on them just so my work is recognized. Um, I don't object to my photos being used out there, especially on the Art and Tool site. I mean, that's a friend. Um, and that's where we document these adapters, but it's uh, nice otherwise for like eBay sales or something like that nature of, uh, you know, I, if I have a photo out there, I like to have it, I like to have credit for having done the, uh, the photo. So the other aspect I do on a lot of my photos is I will do a ruler. And in this case, I'm getting a lot of um, glare. It's a metallic ruler. I know I could probably have better. Um, and let me look to see. I may have to go through when I do this. And I'll probably shield over the top of that just to, to any reflectivity. Um, but I, I have that in a, a real good position. For the photo, it looks uh, like it's aligned really good, centered on the the um, 
the screen of my phone. I don't have the light ring on, of course. With that, that introduces quite a bit of that. You can see the reflection in there. Just because it's a more of a direct light source um, over the top of the uh, subject I'm photographing. And as I say, those, those um, other uh, channels, YouTube channels of EEV blog and Big Clive, they go through and they've got those nice dishes to diffuse that light a little bit better. And it does give um, a lot better photo a lot of the time. It's fo the macro photography in particular is it's all about the light. Um, so much more than even photography in general. So let's go through. I'll, I'm going to do a shield of the... Um, I have to show enough of a view of what I'm also doing on my phone. But I'm going to go through. I'm going to um, do kind of a... a um, to cut down that glare on the ruler and then I will press the button so I don't have to disturb my rig as I take the photo and it gives me the the shot that I've just done uh, with all the glare on my phone that you see and I, then I have a chance you know to, to preview it and I can go through and I can download that I can import it to my phone Okay, and when I do photos, the import is complete. So I can step back to the real view, just with the arrow key, and go through. I, you know, these are front and back of these adapters. If I do have, you know, dust on a, a on the adapter, it's not, you know, new out of the box like this one is for the. Older adapters I've had around, I mean, they have dust on there. I'd go through with the, with mainly the brush to go through and just to brush off that dust. Now on the flip side, you can often come up with, of course, an uneven surface on these adapters. And so what I'll do is I, the most common device that I, that I have is these, um, these caps that come on like the HDMI cables. And I'll use those, I mean, just little nice little rectangular block size things. I could probably go through and to 3D print, you know, something that's a little bit more nuanced, little steps that I could, that I could break apart. Um, but these do the job so much of the time. And so I just go through and I can prop up the um, the adapter as as a, appropriate there to shoot um, a um, the high resolution photograph of the of the back um, the non component side or the wiring side of the adapter and of course that puts it a little bit higher in the field of view so you do have um, it you know, based on your camera position. And I try and do that in advance when I, when I photograph the component side first to, um, to not make it so I have to change the boom or anything like that around at all. Um, I, but I've got this centered. Uh, I've got enough um, uh, from the um, field of view from where the camera is on the boom and again, I go through, I move that foam just to get the, um, get it in the right place, go through and make sure that the ruler is in a, in view. And I just put that ruler, you know, in place accordingly, um, whether it's typically on the top or the bottom, just as a matter of showing the size of what the adapter is, even though that's kind of a standardized thing. Um, once again, I go through, I'm going to shield the, from the, um, the reflective light off that ruler, and I go through, take the picture. It gives me the... Um, 
the preview of what uh, a photo I've taken. I'm going to go through and I'm going to import that as well. Okay, and so both of those are on my phone now. And I'll go through, often what I do is when I'm through taking photos, I can sometimes do a assembly line, I'll work through some adapters and everything else. But the, at the end, a lot of time I can go through and I can exit the app. But if I plug the, the charging cable for the camera in, of course it instantly turns off the wireless and my phone sensing that it's connected to a wireless uh, connection that has internet, it'll often go through and back up those photos to the to the internet um, automatically. So uh, there I have the ability, you know, once they're on the internet to go through and uh, I'll set this to charge, even though I don't have to, it kind of knows to, to charge as it is. Tells us I've lost communication, but it's going through and it's, you saw the brief message there that it figures out that it's on the internet. It's going to go through and it's going to upload those automatically. And I've started with the, um, I've had the Mighty Text app that I, that I use to get text on my computer. That also has a nice thing of doing photos. Um, but I also have the OneDrive and um, other areas that are that um, are backed up to the um, on the from the phone and I can go through and even manually share those and through the photo app as well on my phone so that's the the way I get them up to the internet and the ability to uh, edit them kind of prep them for uh, being um, on the pages that um, are going to provide the documentation of that adapter. People get nice high-res photos. That this helps with the diagramming to see the component identification and things like that. So that is, in a, a relative nutshell, the steps I go through to take photographs of the adapter. That that one part of the of the three um, different sections that I do for these adapters. So I'll go through and we're going to uh, move on to the right in the next segment. I'm going to go through and pause the, um, the recording and get set up for that. Now for the, the next step, and this is going through and any diskettes that would be included with the adapter, I would go through and I would image them on just my little tweener system there. Windows XP 32-bit that's able to get onto the, to the internet. And I've already done this particular diskette for the game card, the, the adapter I just photographed, demonstrated that in, in um, photographing that. And so I haven't gone through and another adapter I'm working on I have to take photos of the one that I unboxed are the diskettes, the two diskettes that were included with the Intel above board two plus that I just got. And in particular, one of these diskettes, I'm not aware of that existing otherwise online or that's been cached before. So we'll go through and I'll do an example of actually imaging these diskettes. Um, rather than the uh, diskette, the option diskette that came with that, with that game card. And so I just insert it in the drive. Among. Okay. So on the system, um, it's just telling me that's that uh, light level let the sensor. Just popped up at the appropriate time. I don't even have that plugged in now. Um, but for the steps of going through and imaging the diskette, I go to my win image. I have a registered copy. I've got the diskette in the drive. I just go through to read disk. Okay. 
<laughs> and that is and see these are 720 kb these are double density diskettes it'll be interesting and see windows xp has a little bit of issues with 720 kb diskettes and we may have to flip back in fact the the game card diskette is um is also 720 kb as well um i'm gonna go through i'm gonna try the other diskette that came with the above drive let me get the um camera here back on this is the other diskette let me go through and see if this will read. Okay, so that complete successfully. I'll have to look at that other diskette at some point in time. Uh, and that is the unfortunate thing that it, um, the OS2 diskette is the one that I was um, more concerned about that I, I don't believe that that exists out there. Uh, and has been imaged yet, but um, so I'll, I'll have to make sure I can image that in some way or to copy or try and save the files or to look at that in some way. And here we see for the the uh, the above board and this these uh, this diskette. And this is grouped with um, just about all the above boards. They have a rather generic dis, uh, diskette. They've got a, um, for all the different um, adapter description files, ADF files, um, the SC program. Uh, they've, they've got that um, relatively generic between all the above board um, adapters that they had. So there it's gone through and it's read the diskette. We would go through from here to save the disk, uh, the, the image file. And I'll go through a lot of time and save that as an IMA or you'll see a, a IMG format. It's the same relative thing. We've got the um, prior um, adapters that I've gone through and uh, taken the images of, uh, including that game card there. So for this one, I would go through, since the diskette is through copying, I'm going to go through and, and, of course, you guys can't see, I'm going to eject from the drive, just to go through and look at the face of the diskette, um, that label on it, to determine a good name um, naming convention for this file and I, I I can go through for more than just that what's called the 8.3 or even the eight characters for the start of the file since the the three characters of the IMA extension are set um, and I can do um, something like Intel and a lot of time I'll go through and I, I won't have any spaces or anything else. I may put underscores or other allowed characters. Um, and of course you can't put characters like the, um, the uh, plus sign or anything like that. But we can put Intel AB2. And I don't have a file by that name quite yet. So that'll work. And we've already read the files. I mean, they're already queued up on the system. I don't need the diskette in the drive. We we'll just go through to save that. And it's that quick. It goes through and to save that. So we have that on the on the on the um, hard drive of the system. And now I will go through. I've already gone through and ejected the diskette on there. 
I'm going to go through and I will bring up the FileZilla client and go through to where I can connect on to Major Tom's FTP for his site and I may have to kind of um, hide this display at some point here for just the initial login details. Let me go through and I'll put up just the webcam. I'll go through and I'll get connected And so it lists that the files I've already uploaded before, I would go through and it should be at the correct place for the, um, the images I've done in the past. I've got that Intel ab2.ima is the file that I just imaged. We'll move that over to Major Tom's server. And so there it is on his side. And we'll go through and even um, disconnect once that's done. And we can go through and to close the FileZilla program. And the FileZilla program, um, I'm using the latest version for XP. Um, which is, of course, um, it has a check for update still selected, but 3.8.0. And I believe that that is the latest um, version that will run for Windows XP. Windows Vista has a slightly later version that it will run, I think 3.9. Um, but that is, in a nutshell, of me going through and imaging a diskette or, or diskettes uh, independently um, for an adapter. And, you know, the second part of that process. And there, these are all steps that can be done individually. So next we will move on to the last step, move, just moving left to right in my, in my studio here um, to have the portion that's normally out of view. So after a pause and getting set up, I'll be right back with that. Okay, so the third step in the, the process or, or the third, third process I do is going through and any manual that would be with the with the adapter and you know this is uh, the reason I even appreciate using this largest tool that I have this is my Rico um, Konica Minolta uh, uh, it's, yeah not not a Rico Konica Minolta color copy machine so let's go through we're going to get that powered on and the reason i like the the copy machine when i scan i scan these to pdf documents or i can do uh even images um you know the the TIFF or a JPG uh, document or image of something if I if I need to, um, but I like where I'm able to adjust the scanner. This is a rather long booklet that's two sided. I would go through and I would just scan effectively the the pages in the order that um, that you would read them, going through the cover, going to the inside, and then on the back. Uh, for these being the last pages, but um, I can adjust the scan area on my on my copy machine, and so 
I turn on the USB attached dock and drive that I that I have. And on the screen, and I'm, I might go through for just kind of a closer view. Of, well, this is probably a good relative view, just an over overview. Um, that with the hard drive on, I can go through and select. I'm saving to external storage. I'm going through. Yeah, let's let me. Pause and I'll, I'll zoom in and see if um, the panel gives a good view because I like to kind of show this as well. Okay, and I'll have to get the camera in position, make sure I'm recording here as well, just to get a kind of a close up on the, the screen. I'm going through and I guess I could probably look at my display here just to see, make sure I get centered up the same way. I'm going through for 600 by 600 dots per inch. Auto color is fine. Um, compact PDF is fine. Um, I usually use that for bigger documents. Just a, a regular PDF is, um, is a good selection in this instance as well. Uh, and you do see I have TF and JPEG and XPS for the, uh, um, even some sort of, uh, of uh, PowerPoint sort of thing too, um, image format there. And then so let's do okay for that. There's even uh, details for the PDF. Now the scan size, and that's the, um, the that's the important aspect here. You have the standard sizes. I'm gonna go with a custom size. I will go through. This is the X coordinate. And so we'll go through for the cover on my, um, on the bed of the scanner, I can get the dimensions for this. And of course that's out of view um, for you guys, but it looks to be about um, four and a half. So we go through four inches, four, and a half and I can even dial that in by you know even as as much of a 16th uh, to get the appropriate scan area and then for our Y we have um, it's just right at uh, five and a half so we're going to go to this section here and I've got the kind of a good um, approximation of where, and let me step back the camera here. I'll go through and I'll, um, I'll get this set up again to kind of the view of what I'm doing with the lid. Open there, got the, and sometimes I have to be kind of fast with this aspect because if you go through um, and pause too much, of course the, the copy machine will go through and reset. So you can't really see with, with me moving the, the camera already, but I'm going through for the name of the file. And it just has a pad alphanumeric That I'm going to go through and I, I put in caps, I'm going to go through and I'm going to say CHS, um, just an underscore game. And here I'm not particularly sh short, I just try and be um, 
uh, descriptive and uh, I can even put um, card and it's a uh, I I I in fact let's go through okay T no D let's do an underscore let's do I I I underscore manual and so that'll have the, the PDF extension. That's my file name. And get the camera in a good position here. Okay, in that choice. So I'm ready to um, copy. In fact, I get, better get two-sided selected as well. And that just allows me to, if I had to remain at one side, if I press start, it would just done that one page and written it to uh, the hard drive in the dock. But since I have two sided, I'm able to work with it. I can do start for the first page. Sometimes these uh, pages do require to push them down so they don't, they're not too curled up. But that has done the, the first page. And on the, on the display, you can, you, it's giving me the instructions of saying, hey, load your next page and when you're finished you press the finish button on the screen and then start to to write it over to the drive so we're just going to work our way through the pages quickly okay so we're doing effectively the second page or the inside page and it just scans that just that area that I'm looking for um, in that one page. Yeah, it's nice. It's really nice. I can lock down that scan area to not have to work with like editing the document later on or anything like that to to get those pages right. And I've done even large manuals this way. Um, the document feeder really doesn't work all that great um, for loose eight and a half by 11, the standard size, unless that's, you know, the, it's in really new condition. And a lot of time I don't want to risk um, the older documentation by trying to get it through the, the document feeder and uh, you're just asking for a jam basically on that. Okay, so we've copied that one side of the document we're going to go through and effectively flip it and go through for the the next pages here and in this area it's nice that the machine doesn't go through and reset once you're in a job it um, you can take a little bit more time to get um, to go through the pages it won't reset or anything like that on you. Okay. Next page. And I'll have to see, this is just an example, but I'll have to see, this would probably come out enough, well enough for for me to, um, to upload as well. And I just go through and I move the hard drive from the dock and I put it in a, a dock of my main system and um, to go through and to to upload that to Major Tom as well. I, I typically also have a copy on my local um, pages. And so I'm all the way through. In fact, I uh, that, that won't be production level because I copied that um that cover as the last page i wasn't paying enough attention again so i'll have to get to this um scanning this some other time now it i have also the above board um grouping of items that you know this is a bound manual and i can set the the 
the size of this, um, but that binding makes it a little bit harder. I have to go through and just with this, sometimes I can go through and I can do this as an eight and a half by 11 or so, you know, just to get the two pages with the fold. But even in some cases, if it's not a real critical manual that I'm interested in preserving, I mean, this is in really nice shape. I'd like to preserve this as is. I mean, I could even go through with a guillotine paper cutter and cut off that binding there. But, um, so I'm gonna have to go through this manual and that's gonna be a little bit more of a challenge for me to, um, to lay that flat on the bed. Oh, I guess the binding, maybe that glue is gonna be loose enough to where the, the papers will, oh, that's a separate section. That's designed to come out, I guess, of the binding. Um, I was going to say if the glue is wore out, maybe the pages will be a little bit more loose and allow copying. But but that is going to be a challenge to go through and to do copies of that as I go through and I redo this game manual for just that oversight of that doing the uh, the um, the last page. So it tells you the amount of originals I copied. Um, and then I would go through to finish. Okay. And then it says press start to begin transmission. So that goes through and just that quick, it's gone through and put that over on my hard drive. So I can go through when I, when I go through to shut things down and to, to turn off this hard drive, I just pull it out of the dock and go through to move the file over to my main system to get that last part of this, of these three sections I do to document the adapters. So that is, you know, the, the sequence of things that I go through. I'm gonna go through and get, back on the screen myself. Okay. So that's a, the, the three areas I do for documenting these adapters. A little bit more formal, step-by-step uh, -step, uh, view of that sequence. I've done a, a previous video I went through and didn't touch on everything, did a relatively quick video. Um, but if you, like this content, click on the the like button. You know, if you're enjoying this and uh, subscribe my channel, if you're not already, recommend that to your friends for them to subscribe as well. But that is all I have for now. This is IBM Museum. Thank you.